audience today to briefly close their eyes. And if you're watching this from home as well, I want you to close your eyes. All right, looking at all of you guys. <laughs> now I want you to take a deep breath in and out. In and out. And while your eyes are closed, I want you to imagine yourself in your dream location, wherever that may be. And not only are you in your dream location, but you're doing something that you love. Keep your eyes closed and continue to breathe in and out. In and Excuse me, excuse me, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Ma'am, I have a question. Ma'am, hello? Welcome to a brief description of my mind when I was working in retail. <laughs> Now I want everyone to keep an image in mind until the end of the talk. I want you to imagine fluorescent lights, voices, and music playing behind it all. And you guys will soon see why this sets the perfect scene for why giving up is OK. Now some might say this is a contradiction. Bree, we watch your channel all the time, and you say, never give up. Follow your dreams. Keep going for it. So why today would you say that giving up is OK? And I'll tell you, there is a little bit more to the story. One day, I was at my fifth job. Yes, my fifth job, not my first, or my second, or my third, but my fifth job. And yes, I worked them all at the same time, while being a full-time college student with 16 credits for perspective. And a woman approaches the counter, and she wanted to get some information on pantyhose and the sizing. So I inform her of the sizing for the pantyhose, and she, under her breath, says, well, clearly, you don't know what you're talking about. And I realized at this moment, it was time to go to what I like to call my happy place. <laughs> my happy place had a name as well. It was called the land of long-term employment. Because <laughs> had I replied the way I would like to reply, as many of you know, um, long-term employment would no longer be a thing. So I said, happy place, happy place, happy place. And I reply. And then she goes about her shopping. And then she comes back to the counter to check out. And I ask her a standard question. I say, what is your email? She looks at me, and she's like, oh. She said, what's next? Do you want my blood type, too? So say it with me. Happy place, happy place, happy place. <laughs> and I, you know, in the most sales-appropriate voice, I say, ma'am, um, it's just a standard question we ask all customers. And she looks at me. And then I proceed to you know, finish the transaction. I bag up her clothes. And as I'm handing them to her, she says, stupid slur ear. And you could um, guess what slur she said, you know, on your own time. But something in me snapped that day. Um, usually, I would brush something like this off. I'm a pretty calm, cool, and collected person. But something about this day was just different for me. I knew that something was off about this interaction. I quickly ran, well not ran, but I asked the sales associate to cover the register and I walked very quickly to the employee bathroom and I broke down and I cried. I had my hands covering my face and I was crying and trying not to let anyone hear me and saying, you're not supposed to be here. And I realized at this moment that my happy place was flawed. Sometimes our ideas of happiness are not our own. There are family's ideas, society's ideas, or even they may be your own idea, but one that has kind of since expired, you know? So I'm here today, today to tell you that giving up is OK. Giving up the idea that the job that you're working today is the job you will work forever is OK. Giving up the idea that you have nothing else to contribute to this world than what you're contributing at this very moment is OK. And giving up the you that you were yesterday to be the you that you are destined to be tomorrow is not only OK, but it may be one of the most important decisions you make in your life. Now, goals. A Harvard study says 83% of people have no clear or defined goals. 83%. And I was one of that 83%. I used to just imagine, you know, typing up my resignation letter, throwing my hands in there, just typing, going in, going in, and just like a Frisbee, throwing it on someone's desk and, and walking out like an action movie as the building explodes. Well, you know, <laughs> not killing anyone, of course, but I, I just dreamed of uh, walking out that way. But I never really thought, like, what does success mean to me? So I realized I didn't have a plan for success, a marker to say that I'd achieved it, or even a timeline, because I had 
too many jobs, or I had homework, or frankly, I was tired or lazy. And I just didn't feel that it was that important. So how did I get from the 83% of people that don't have clear and defined goals to the 17% that do? It was the day that I decided to walk vigorously across my campus and into that school bookstore, and I got a $7 sketchbook, and I created what I like to call my dream book. Now, I walked into one of my jobs. I worked at the Office of Student Life, and I asked my boss, I said, hey, you have a stack of magazines. Can I borrow one? And I began to go to the library. I typed up all my goals, and then I began to cut out magazine clippings and different um, ideas and drawings and really visualizing them like a dream board but like on fire. So then, <laughs> at the time when I made this book, I had about 250 subscribers on my art and beauty and fashion channel. And then I had an art channel that no one really knows about, but you know, some people still do. <laughs> and I had about 10,000 page views. So I thought, what is the scariest number I could think of for subscribers? And I thought, 500. Oh, that's, that's almost double what I have now. And I just didn't feel scary enough. I was like, 700? OK, OK, we're tiptoeing into kind of scary territory. And then I came up with the idea of 1,000 subscribers. I was like, OK. That's pretty outrageous. <laughs> like 1,000 1, strangers? Like that just didn't seem realistic to me, but I wrote it down. And then I thought 100,000 page views. And now today, just three years after creating this book with a glue stick in the library, I have over 620,000 loyal and dedicated subscribers. Some of them are here today. And I have over 30 million page views. You see, it's not just about what you're giving up, it's about what you're inviting into your life as well. So, I continued. And one may ask, how did I get from this somewhat homeless, sometimes I slept in the library during summers when it was too expensive to get on-campus housing, and um, how did I get from this girl wearing thrifts and, um, you know, staying in the library, staying with friends, to where I am now working with brands such as Google, Kellogg's as well, um, you know, I always joke with my parents who are in the front row here about, I said, hey guys, one day I'm gonna be on a cereal box, just wait. And now I, I called them uh, in January and said, hey guys, uh, not quite the box, but I'm gonna be on an international cereal commercial, so <laughs> I told you so, guys. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, some may ask how I got from this picture to that picture, and I'll say that I changed my mindset from static to fluid, meaning I never believed that where I was was just the end all be all for me. And that I am changing constantly every single day. You can leave this room today and in an hour make a change that you've been meaning to make for years or months or days and there you've already changed something. You're fluid. Everyone in this room has fluidity in their life. You can change at any moment and that's the beauty of life. So I changed my language as well. I wasn't just struggling. I was going through a difficult moment at the time. I wasn't just broke because soon I would be rich from all the jobs I was working. I would have minimal student loan debt. And by the way, this January I finished paying off my student loans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I wasn't homeless. I was just networking with friends from their living room couches. <laughs> so once I started seeing my circumstances not only as positive but as temporary, everything began to change for me. Something else I had to give up was my ideal like, model of the typical college student. And I realized that that came a lot from TV and movies and, and even stories from people who had been to college before. I realized that I wasn't supposed to be at every frat party or event or you know, wearing my face painted, although I did paint my face a couple times. We're not going to relive that. But I realized that I had to create a mold for the college student with the big dream. So I started leaving events early to go edit my videos before work. And I even made sacrifices, such as one of my favorite music artists was performing at my school for homecoming. And I took a big leap of faith and decided, OK, I got this opportunity to fly out with a brand um, to do a photo shoot. I've you know, never been to this place before. I'm going to just take this chance and, um, and see where it goes. And I'm going to sacrifice this concert I really want to go to. And that brand to this day is Revlon. And that photo shoot can be seen internationally in every pharmacy um, as it is a hair dye box. So I am one of the faces of Cream of Nature as well. So 
of course, sometimes I doubted my choices. I said, you know, am I really helping myself by giving up that typical college experience that everyone tells me that I need to get? But as I would land and run to my finals, my friends would reassure me that what I was doing was the right choice. And this is another thing that is very difficult to give up, but is very necessary to give up, is sometimes the people close to you. I would have people in my life at the time where I would tell them about my accomplishments, so excited, and they would reply with enthusiasm, but they do what we call in this new generation something like sneak this. So I had to do an audit of my friend groups. And I didn't just pay attention to how I felt with them, I paid attention to how I felt afterwards. So if I, after hanging out with them, felt excited, enthusiastic, positive, just smiling from ear to ear, or just you know, ready to go about my day, these were friendships that I not only needed to nurture, but continue. And um, a lot of those people I feel that way about are here today. So just a brief moment for them. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> um, but on the contrary, if there was a friendship that after hanging out I felt um, a little insecure or I had to hide my wins from that person or you know, shrink myself to make them more comfortable, Unfortunately, these were relationships that I had to let go. Another thing that I would say to give up that's very, very important is your idea of normal. I realized that I wasn't normal, so why would I try to fit my YouTube channel into this traditional mold? I liked art. I played instruments. Um, I was a tech nerd since I was little, so I like you know, downloading plugins and doing cool stuff on the computer. Um, I just got my degree in animation and interactive media. So I, on my channel, I decided, hey, I'm going to use rap and trap music on makeup tutorials and animation and rotoscoping and all that cool stuff. And then I even used R&B remixes on makeup tutorials. I figured that if I found this cool, someone else would find it relatable as well. So what I want to say to you guys today that are all listening is that what you have to say is not only important, but it is unique to your story. You are important, and so are your words. They have a lot of magnitude and impact. And your actions when you leave this room have impact as well. I remember, I recall saying in the beginning of my talk that I wanted you guys to remember something. Fluorescent lights, music, and people talking. I want you to bring that memory back, because just three years ago, for me, that described a woman calling me out of my name behind a makeup counter. Today, that describes this stage. So I want you to continue to give up the people that are limiting you, the obstacles in your life, and the things holding you back. I need you to give that up. The world needs you to give that up. Because your stage is coming, and your moment will be grand. Thank you.